got it by the that's end. That's great. There were a couple of questionable notes I put in there, but hey, that's jazz, baby. That's, that's be great. I do have to give a shout out. I did not invent that vamp. That's by a really fantastic guitar player named Corey Christiansen. Uh, super good vamp. Uh, our publisher, U, uh, Eugenio, showed me that one. Yeah? Yeah, last week. So it's, it's been It's the Eugenio to the Riff Pipeline. Yeah, it's the Corey to Eugenio. This this Riff went all over the place. Eugenio's in Italy. So we had, it went from yeah. Utah, where Corey is, to Italy to Canada. It's crazy. What a journey yeah. it's been on. And now, across the world. Who knows where it'll go next? <laughs> Maybe Bolivia? Maybe. Maybe. Well, mm, amazing. welcome to the stream, everybody. Mm -hmm. My name is Ayla tesler Mave. And I'm Kent. Kent what? Kent Shores. He has a full name. <laughs> I have a fuller amazing. name, but Kent Shores is all you'll get. I also have a fuller name. One really? day we'll reveal. Whoa. Yeah. Yeah, my name gets even longer. <laughs> <laughs> so, what are we talking about today? You'll find out in a moment, because first we need to talk about a couple, a couple housekeeping items. First one, the Q&A is happening at the end of the stream, but it is exclusive for members. But if you're not a member and you want to tune in, you can get a free seven-day trial right now, and you'll be able to actually watch the whole stream. Yeah, ask us any question you'd like. Sign up yeah. uh, on guitario.com slash trial. Um, get that seven-day free membership. Ask us any questions you would like. Oh, uh, yeah. And we are going to be doing a giveaway. Uh, the YouTube community is eligible to win a Guitario membership. Amazing. A whole year free. That's an amazing value. Yeah. There's lots of cool stuff. Yeah, you're getting 
a cool product for zero dollars. <laughs> yeah, that's what we all want. <laughs> that's a good deal. You're really saving. Um, and in and, and yen. In yen. And yen. <laughs> oh man, I am losing it already, and it's only like we're, two minutes into the stream. Yeah, we're it's two oh six. We're already there. It is only gonna get worse from here, my <laughs> friends. So, yeah, the members are eligible to win this capo right here. It is. Probably the greatest capo on the market. Yeah, I mean, easily. explain why. Why is it better than just your average capo? I can tell you exactly why. It is much better than your average capo because it uses uh, what they call ART, which is uh, active radius technology, I think is what they call it. I, I, I think that's just art. It is art. They use <laughs> art to make it better. And basically, <laughs> most capos, when you put them on your guitar, they lay flat. Capos are generally a solid right. thing. They and But guitar fretboards are not flat surface, they are almost all curved in some sense. So if you have a guitar, let's say a vintage style guitar that has a very curved neck, you're gonna put a lot more pressure uh, pressure on the middle strings, like third and fourth strings, than the outside strings. Mm -hmm. So you'll often be out of tune. You'll see a lot of people with their capos on and they got retune and blah, blah, blah. Yeah. G7 solved that problem for guitar players and said, hey, let's just make the capo move with the guitar and it form fits. It's Gorgeous. insane. So I first got turned on to them because I was having that problem with very radius uh, guitar fretboard, mm -hmm. put on the capo. I didn't have enough time to tune in between songs. It just had to be on, go. Um, and I can do that with that capo. It's insane. What a capo. And they're a nice, like, family company. They're great to deal with. They're awesome people who make awesome products. That is a beautiful way to put it. Yeah. It's it's very true. So yeah. one lucky guitar member will be uh, sent that exact capo. So um, you're going to love it. It is, as I've said before, the best capo on the market. Yeah. It, it's so good. So. Yeah, and before we get on to the topic, uh, just because there were some inquiries, the shoes for today, I got these Nike Air Force Ones, but kind of funky. They're not just straight up a color, they're two colors. And I like that they're <laughs> they're like, mismatched, you see? I like that we have a shoe update every yeah. Guitar Riff episode. Well, last time I didn't. I wore my very cool new glow in the dark sneakers, but right. actually no one asked. So <laughs> I didn't. I You'll didn't. never see them. You'll never know how cool they are. I'm not bitter about it. <laughs> uh, okay, so today's topic we're talking about picks. And what I find interesting is I haven't thought too deeply into picks on the level that someone like Kent has, because you have paid. I have wasted so much money on guitar picks. Yeah. And <laughs> about every two years, I hate the guitar pick I own, mm -hmm. and then I buy an absurd amount of guitar picks until I find the one I like. So, yeah. um, ranging in prices, so. Yeah, because I have never really spent more than, I want to say like 60 cents on an individual yeah, pick. Individual so like, pick. I got this in a pack of 12, it's roughly yeah, seven. Which and one are you whatever. using? I'm using the 1.14 Tortex. I like yeah, it because it's Dunlop purple pick. and there's a little turtle on it. It's so cute. Mm -hmm. And it's not real turtle, fake turtle. <laughs> fake turtle shell. Yeah. Thank you for specifying. So I guess it's still a vegan product for all you nasty vegans out there. I'm vegan, by the way. That's why you got to rip on the vegans. <laughs> yeah, no one does that. Everyone loves vegans. <laughs> Anyways, uh, you are sporting a very impressive array of picks there. Why don't yeah, you Yeah, I did the math and on? was like, I think this is a, oh good, we can see it. This is $100 worth of guitar picks on here right now. <laughs> That's wild. Which, which is so insane. The, yeah. So I've, I've got a few today. Uh, so we've got this one, which is a wagon pick. Uh, mm -hmm. And I think that one, I, I'm going to say the price is in Canadian because that's what I paid for up here. So it was like 20 bucks, 25 bucks Canadian. So like $0 same. American. Yeah, like <laughs> that's like 60 cents American. So um, <laughs> yeah, so we've got this wagon pick, which is great. Um, typically used for like Django Reinhardt style guitar mm -hmm. playing. Uh, I got into that, so I bought the pick to go with it. It is a monster, but it's very comfy. It's got these like little grooves on there. I'll put it so we can see some little grooves. So you're really good grip for your hands. Um, really love it. Very thick, but it plays like a thin pick. Then I've got the blue chip pick, which is one of my all time favorites. Uh, this is the TD35. They make a wide range of picks. Uh, cool thing with it is it's beveled. I don't think we'll be able to really see it, but the it's kind of got, it's kind of shaped on the side. This is like the most expensive pick on here. This pick was is 35 American. What? Yeah, for the single pick, not for a pack of them. One oh pick is 35 bucks, which is crazy. crazy. Um, and then I've got the uh, chicken picks, which uh, Andrew Clark turned me on to, uh, who writes our guitar riff. He uh, 
the guitar riff blog, I should say. He writes all the yeah. articles on there. He's he turned me on to these. He's written every guitar riff. Ever. It's crazy, actually. <laughs> He's At awesome. such a young age, he really, <laughs> yeah. Um, but yeah, these are uh, these are not as expensive, but they're not cheap. I think they're like seven or eight bucks a pick. They're pretty, um, they're, they're different. They're of an interesting material that sticks out. We're going to go through these, so... Um, Soon, uh, this is an old classic. I love this pick. This is like the jazz guitar player's favorite pick, pretty much the D'Andrea Pro Plec. Um, again, these are like two, three bucks a pick. They're a little bit more expensive. And then the last one is new to me. This is a Dario pick. Um, this is I don't even know how to say this properly. Cass Cassine, whatever what, that. I'm not gonna correct you because I have no idea. I don't know either. <laughs> anyway, it's great. Uh, it seems uh, a very thick, like two millimeter pick, but this was like twenty bucks Canadian. So. Um, well, it's it's really interesting. So, yeah, why did I spend? Why is there a hundred dollars of picks on the table? Yeah. Is the ultimate question. I mean, and, yeah. And we're gonna see if it even <laughs> matters. So we're gonna compare your pick that you have to these five picks. And I think you're the you haven't played any of these picks. I don't think I've loaned never, you any of them. Yeah. Never. So um, I, I think it's gonna be better coming from you. Mm for this challenge because I'm very biased because I want to justify my purchases. So Yeah, don't um, we all? <laughs> yeah, so I really love all of that and I, I like, uh, I really love the blue chip pick. That's like probably one of my favorites. Is These are the all fantastic. That's 35. 35 American. is the most. So that's roughly, that's like 47 Canadian. Yeah. Let's round it up to 50. Yeah. Let's round my, I mean, this is 60 cents. So yeah. that pick is over 50 times more expensive than this pick. Yeah. It and is. the question is, is it over 50 times better than this pick? So I will say part of the premise <laughs> of these blue chip picks and all of these in general is they do last a long time. I find for myself, okay. I wear through picks like that within a few months mm. if, if I play every day. Okay. Um, if I, I love Tortex. I own Tortex uh, picks, the same ones you have. Um, love those, but I do wear through them. So every like four to six months, I got to throw out the pick and then use a new one that's more pointed. Mm. This... Blue chip, I've had for two years, and it's basically brand new. I mean, I think I've had this for two years also. <laughs> Interesting. Interesting. You don't, you don't wear three years. I, I don't know. It must be the way I, I pick. I, like, just yeah. wreck picks. So, um, <laughs> so yeah. So what about this guy? Yeah. He's just, just destroying picks. I, I don't know. Like, I do think I can have quite an aggressive attack. I find it interesting. Maybe I just have so many that I just, like, you cycle through cycle so many of through them. them. Yeah, because I, I feel like I very frequently have a good 10 of these in yeah. my guitar case. So, like, mm -hmm. who knows which one I'm grabbing every time. Right. Sure. That's so. fair. <laughs> well, why don't yeah. we try this? Because I think, like anything, the proof is in the pudding. So we should... We're eating pudding? We're First step, we're going to eat some pudding, oh, and then we're going to try these guitar picks out. <laughs> well, we're going to put the guitar picks in the pudding. And then eat those. And then eat those. Yeah. Oh, that video hasn't come out of you eating those picks yet. Yeah. Prepare yourself. <laughs> We're not going to say anything more than we already have. I mean, on that topic, like we are going to say more in the stream in general. It's yes. not like we're going to go the rest of the stream. Like just quick PSA: silently. don't eat your guitar picks. Only done by a professional. Which I am. Yeah. I'm a um, professional pick eater. All right, let's. Okay. <laughs> let's just get. Let's into let's set it. a baseline. Let's use your pick. Okay. I will say the uh, where. You know what? Let's play first. I'm used to this pick. Great for funk and E. Guitar was made for funk and E. Yeah, it really was. Like it works for like fast playing. For me, like I feel like it allows me to do everything I really need to do. Totally, those thicker picks definitely give you more, I find more accuracy with like single note lines and stuff. Yeah, um, yeah. I think with, um, I know people prefer different thicknesses. Um, we won't even touch. That's like a whole show on its own on yeah. thick thickness. Um, amazing. Okay. Like, I feel comfortable with this pick, but also it's literally the only pick the I've only pick ever I've used. Let's go from <laughs> least expensive to most expensive okay. of my picks. So, sure. So the next one up, I think Proplex is this one. This one is. This the is next. the one you were saying was two to three dollars per pick. Something like that. I can't. I, I can't remember the. Map, so. I mean, obviously, I'll also be biased by the fact that I'm not used to these picks, right? Sure. Like, it takes you a second to adjust to, like, the feel of it, like, how much rebound there is or any give. Yep. I mean, obviously, this one is a pretty thick pick. I feel like this texture is hard to hold on to when your hands get sweaty. Mm, interesting. I mean, the tone. 
one is different. 100%. Heavier attack for sure. Thick. It's a thick peak. <laughs> she thick. <laughs> Incredible. Like, I wouldn't be crazy uncomfortable if I, like, showed up to play a gig. I was a fool dunce and forgot a pick. Oh, I'm sorry, <laughs> and a what? So a, fool, a fool dunce. <laughs> it's a fool and a dunce. I hope neither of those words are, I don't know, have, like, bad connotations I, to them beyond, I, like, being I don't fool. see you getting canceled in the comments. So For saying okay. dunce. <laughs> <laughs> um... But who knows? Every word has a weird history when you go back far enough, which sucks. Anyways, um, this pick, yeah, I wouldn't be disappointed if I had to play a gig with it, but I could already tell as my hands got sweatier. Uh, it, slippery, it would get slippery. This texture, mm. I don't like. Okay, okay. Yeah. Um, go back to your first pick and then go back to that one. Why? I find this is the like telling <laughs> sign. Yeah, like this to me feels like home. Sure. Because I live in a pick. Your I'm house is say. a giant pick. My house is a giant pick. Kidding, guys. That was what we call a good old fashioned joke. <laughs> and that really completed it. Now it's funny. It wasn't funny before. I'm sorry. Uh, but I will say the thickness of it is quite interesting. Mm -hmm. The material of that one is what I really like. I know yeah. you find it slippery, but I find it gives a darker sound. Yeah, yeah. So, I mean, if I were just. Like if I were in the studio and I wasn't having to play to the point of sweaty hands, mm. I would definitely consider using this pick if that was a tone I was looking for. Like sure. the darker, heavier kind of tone. Mm -hmm. Interesting. Okay, yeah. let's keep going. Pick number three. We're getting more expensive. Actually, you, know, you should just keep them all over there because we'll right. just slowly go back and forth. This is the chicken pick. Some of you, uh, I've seen a lot of people mm. commenting about Jazz 3s in the comments. This is a similar shape to a Jazz yeah, 3. Yeah, I hate Jazz 3s so much. Oh, you're gonna get, people are going to get fired up in there. Yeah. Um, I hate Jazz 3s and all the people who use... I'm kidding. Wow. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. That's not true at all. Some of my Take favorite that, Eric Johnson. in the universe <laughs> use Jazz 3s. And you know, that being said, uh, I have been thinking lately it would be interesting to try a Jazz 3 again mm. now that I am... A new person with a more open mind than I've ever had before. Mm, interesting. Yeah. I like the XL Jazz threes, the bigger ones. I like I like those quite a bit. Yeah. So what's the premise of like why these were created? So I think um, <laughs> it's the material. It's a little bit brighter. I can't remember the exact. So it's like for made. chicken picking. I'm assuming. One hundred percent for chicken. My picking. problem That's is I can't chicken pick. That's close enough. Yeah. Yeah. I don't even know how chicken picking sounds. <laughs> I feel like I can hear the attack is way more aggressive. Yeah. This is a cool one for a band setting. I actually kind of love the feel of this. I know, it's insane, right? Same thing happened to me. It almost like, I can almost feel the reverberation of the string through it. It's insane. This is actually really fun one to use. How much, one was, how much was this one again? Those are like, I think they're like seven or eight bucks a pick. I, they're not it's crazy like, expensive. It's like a massage for my uh, fingers. Interesting. They're very bright, though. Yeah, like, but it really... almost um, is textured. Like, the mm -hmm. tone has, like, a little, like, something, something on it. Yeah. Really great in a band setting. This, like, if you need to cut, if you're playing in a lot of band, like, maybe you play in a, I don't know, like... Once chicken picking band. A chicken picking band, or even not a chicken picking band, and you need to slice through. It's a hard thing for guitar players to cut through a bigger band. It's a great pick for that, because it just brings out those, like, higher frequencies. Cut through a band, you could use a. I don't want to make a violent joke. Never mind. <laughs> next pick. <sighs> um, next on. two, I think, are tied for price point. So I'll give you this one. This is the. $20? $20, yeah. Um, this is the uh, the one I can't say. Cassin? Cassin? Cassin. 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 I <laughs> um, mean. By uh, this Diderio. This gives me Rocky Road ice cream vibes, you know? Interesting. You know, you all know what I mean. <laughs> There's no way anyone knows what I mean. I don't know what I mean. Why do I even speak sometimes? <laughs> Interesting. It's hard to not get that like annoying quack sound. Interesting. I find with those thicker picks, it, you have to almost lighten up your touch. 
I would not pay twenty dollars for this. Whoa. Norway. I would pay maybe like eleven. Okay. It's the extra nine dollars I can't justify. Okay, got it. Yeah. I want to be clear. This is so arbitrary. I don't even really strongly believe anything I'm saying right now. <laughs> I don't know because I just don't think that. I just I'll play whatever you put in my hands. You know. Sure. Well, I think there's something to be said about that too. But. Oh, you know what? That pick is a little funny. Sometimes uh, the way you, which direction goes to the thumb. Yeah, flip it the other way. Try it oh, that way. It definitely sounds brighter now. Mm -hmm. Flip it back. This has a darker, rounder sound. Interesting. Not all picks are created that way, but yeah. some some are. Mm -hmm. I will say it feels like it's worth $20. Interesting, okay. Yeah, so like my value, I wouldn't pay more than 11 buckaroonies for it because I gotta save up for Next my Porsche Taycan in oh, the future. <laughs> that nine bucks is gonna make all the difference. It's really important. <laughs> yeah, but it, it feels like it's worth $20. Like okay. it's, it's something that feels like it'll never wear down. <laughs> 100%, yeah, you yeah. did own that pick the rest of your life, most likely. But we all know that wouldn't actually happen because no one could keep a pick for that long. You can keep a pick for like at most six months and then you lose it. <laughs> you know what, I, uh, I bought a pickpocket thing. It like attaches to my keychain and I don't lose picks anymore. You're for, a pickpocket? I am a pickpocketer. Kent, that's a really mean thing to do. It really is. Yeah. But I don't lose picks anymore. Because you steal them from other people. I do, yeah, that's pickpocket. what I'm going to, yeah. Oh, look over there. Yeah. You reach in to their yeah. pocket. That's actually how I got all these picks. That's awesome. Yeah. No, it's not, Kent. Bad behavior. <laughs> Let's move to the next pick. This is, this is everything I say. I'm like, oh, this is the on? wagon pick. I hope I'm saying the company's name right. Wagon. W e g e n wagon. What um, is this stuff in here? Is that just like build it's just up? It's gunk. Yeah. <laughs> All right. <laughs> it's like uh, it, not like hand gunk, but like I keep it in like that pouch, and the pouch has like the. Um, stuff on the side. It's pouch stuff. <laughs> Can I like not use this? <laughs> it's pouch stuff. Yeah, pouch stuff. Oh boy. I just don't want to. Ew. It's a cool one for playing chords if you play like bigger chords. Yeah. What am I doing, guys? It's pretty cool. I like how you can hear it like Very hit the funky, funky. Yeah. Now that's a cool sound. Yeah. It's a beefy pick. Yeah. Yeah. Is there a type of beef that I'm wagyu? Wagyu? Uh, yeah. Is that a type of is that a steak cut? I'm a vegan. I don't know these things. There's not there's not like wagyu mushrooms. Um, wagyu tofu. It might yeah, not be maybe. quite the same. Wagyu. Yeah. Wag. Yeah. It's a premium Japanese steak cut. Spelled W-A-G-Y-U. Yeah. What did you say this was called again? Wagan. And you said it was beefy. Ah, it's the Wagyu of picks. I see. <laughs> I see where we're I can't use that. it. <laughs> <laughs> it does feel... It's $20, right? Yeah. I mean, other than the extreme buildup of pouch stuff, as you said. Yeah. I mean, it's... I'm going to put it down. Yeah, I mean, it's, it's... There's pouch stuff on all those picks. Yeah, but this one you can see it, and right. that's the problem. Oh, I see, okay. I'm going to cover it with other ones, because it makes me feel a little grimy. I see, okay. Well, finally, the piece de resistance, the blue, <laughs> ch the blue chip. This is the cr cream of the crop of picks, in my opinion. Yeah? They're great. Um, really love these. This is a $35 pick. Holy... Uh, the Ooh. logo, the blue chip logo is to your thumb. The way oh. it's like beveled and stuff. Yeah. Beveled. Nice word. Beveling. Do they 
only come in this thickness? No. No. Okay. I mean, it's a nice pick. Again, the this is the material I, I strongly dislike because it gets sweaty. Mm. I find I find that one sometimes it'll even if it gets sweaty sometimes it like still will st stick a little bit. Okay. It's, yeah, it's all that pouch stuff build up. Yeah, that's the secret sauce. <laughs> yep. And I guess my thinking here is: uh, is it really fifty times better than a regular pick? Go back and forth. That's what that's what sold me on it. You think it's 50 times better. 50 times is a lot. Well, that's what the price says. Uh, oh. <laughs> Can't argue with math. Where did it go? Uh, uh -oh. oh, it's under you. Where is it? Under you. Right? I'll, I'll grab it. OK. How many guitar players does it take to find a pick? OK, we did it. Whew. It's a lot of work. <laughs> Not, I would say it's not 50 times better. But here's the thing. I would imagine, because you played it and you just said you were sold on it and you believe in it and you put money down and you're like, yes, it is worth this, that when you pick it up to play, you probably just think differently about the experience of playing because hmm. you're holding this pick. That's fair. That might be part of it. I'm sure there's some psychological benefits. I, I hear yeah. it a lot on acoustic guitar. I'm going to swap over. Oh, yeah. Yeah, because I think then maybe we'll hear the difference. If you want to, like, compare with my pick, maybe. Yeah. But, um, yeah, I think, obviously, a, an issue that could come up is, let's say you're on tour and you lose it. Yeah, that's, that, I... I feel like they yeah. might be hard to find at, like, every... Yeah, that's true. That is definitely regular an Regular old guitar store. Yeah, that's true. I've heard that argument a few times for the uh, expensive picks of like, yeah. hey, if I lose it, then I'm screwed, you know? Yeah, and I'd argue if you're someone who does frequently lose their picks, you definitely should not invest in an expensive pick. Yeah, no It's kidding. only for people who can keep picks for long periods of time. That's fair. Yeah. Um, okay, this is Ayla's pick. Um, Okay, and then we'll use my pick. It sounds brighter for sure, I think. Nice. I'm gonna be honest, I like the sound of mine better just because it's darker. Yeah, it's noticeably different. Yeah, no kidding. I mean, I'm, it, again, this is subjective, though. I'm sure there are people who'd be like, I like the brightness and the articulate nature of the blue chip pick, you know? But personally, personally, I don't. I do not. To each their own. Yeah. Um, so I guess, I mean, at the end of the day, this is kind of similar to all the discussions we've had around gear. It's kind of up to you to decide if it's worth it based on your values and your relationship to quality versus price mm -hmm. and you know that whole thing like personally I can't see myself certainly not getting the blue chip pick like mm -hmm. just because I didn't personally vibe with it maybe if it was a different thickness or a different material I'd feel differently mm -hmm. um the 20 dollars ones I actually quite enjoyed mm -hmm. those I those I would maybe consider I'm a little wary of this one and all its pouch buildup, yeah, because it's a little unsightly and a little disgusting. <laughs> no offense. <laughs> just pouch stuff. I don't know what the big deal is. <laughs> pouch stuff. Someone, someone commented, Kent's pouch needs a good cleaning. Anyways, don't take that out of context. Um, which one was it? Was this the other twenty dollar one? It was. I think this one was my favorite. Interesting. Okay. And again, to be honest, I did really like the feel of this one. I just can't get over the, you, you know already. I'm not even going to speak further on that. So yeah, I think that that was interesting because I've never tried picks like this before. Mm -hmm. I definitely think any person who is interested in whether or not these picks work for them should just try and yes. see. Because you'll maybe have the experience like Kent had because you were saying you picked it up and you're like, yeah.
Mm -hmm. This is good. (laughs) Yeah, totally. Mm -hmm. And there's um, a a lot of pick companies do make like um, mixed packs. So you can, if you do want to try out, I know Dunlop does for sure. Mm -hmm. Uh, I'm pretty sure Diderio does uh, or Planet Waves. And um, yeah, you can you can find like a good mixed pack if you're just like experimenting with, Mm -hmm. um, especially if you're trying to also narrow down what thickness you like, what material you like, what shape of the pick you like, like all of that. Um, it's and it's a neat way to it's a very cheap way to experiment with the tone of your guitar as well. Yeah. Right, because a yeah. guitar there's no guitar pedal that's well there are guitar pedals that are forty dollars but like <laughs> brand name guitar p- pedals that are forty dollars. Um, so, you know, and I think um, I don't know. For me, I, you know, it's funny you talk about the darkness versus brightness with between the two on the acoustic. I actually prefer it being brighter. Right. So that goes to show how subjective it is, right? Yeah. Totally. Yeah. yeah I think. Um, yeah, for me, I don't know, the blue chip, I actually kind of want to buy another one, so, yeah. <laughs> so this show solidified that I don't want one, but you want another I one. I want another one, yeah. <laughs> That's amazing. I, I, they make a Jazz 3 shape that I, I want to get. This is the Teardrop TV, Teardrop shape. Mm-hmm. Um, I want to get a Jazz 3 version. What does the D in TD stand for? Teardrop. No one ever speak of this. That was so embarrassing. <laughs> Good thing we're not recording live. Yeah, good thing, right? Anyways, <laughs> yeah, I think all this being said, though, the reason I preferred the darker sound isn't just because I always prefer darker tones in instruments. It's also because you do, kind of. I mean, I generally lean that way, but it's also the chords you were playing. Mm. Just in general, I felt like that fit the vibe more. But interesting. I think this goes to show there is something to be said for having a variety mm. based on the difference in tone you can get. Because, for example, when I'm in the studio and I'm recording, we actually do sometimes try out different picks 100%. to find the, the right same. tone, right? Yeah. So it's like then not even based off of what I find most comfortable. It's what's going to give me the right tone. Yeah. So that's another side as well to I'd, consider. Yeah, 100%. I'd yeah. love to know, too, what everybody is thinking about these picks. I know we've mm-hmm. there's been some pouch discussions already. but Maybe I think too many. <laughs> too many. Um, but if anybody thought one, if they all sounded the same, that, that would be interesting to know, too. I know. I remember I tried recording a bunch of different picks, and mm-hmm. then I listened back, and I was like, I think they all sound the same. But Yeah, I mean, in the room, to me, they don't. But maybe once you remove the, uh, I don't know, the tone of the guitar unplugged like for example we're hearing we're hearing the acoustic sound on top of the yeah electric direct sound or Mm -hmm. i mean especially in the room with an acoustic guitar it's just a little bit more (laughs) there's just there's just a certain like "Mm," that isn't going to come across to someone i think through like a recording like the vibrations and the and the overtones might not translate the same way. You know what I'm saying? You know what I'm saying? <laughs> yeah. <laughs> I do. <laughs> <laughs> you know? <laughs> uh, yeah. I. You know, I, I was going to mention earlier, too, we were talking about the brightness. Blue chip picks are really common with uh, bluegrass players. They use them mm. quite a bit. So when you're doing that stuff, it's like really got to jump out. Yeah. Yeah. So that, that says something about, again, the tone and the context. So in that context, I mean, yeah, bluegrass, I'm not like particularly experienced. I'd say it's one of the genres I know the least about overall. Mm. But from what I know about bluegrass, there's definitely a tendency to move towards brighter sounds. It's very articulate, technically precise playing in most cases. Yeah. And yeah, I could totally see why the blue chip pick would just work fantastically for that. Yeah. And the chicken pick and pick. Country, country guys, yeah. that one, yeah. The country folk. Yeah. Yeah, so I think that's pretty interesting mm. to consider. Uh, I enjoyed this discussion. Interesting. I still interesting. do not well, see You're not sold, hey? You're not. Paying, you know, almost $50 for the blue chip pick. But again, I'm not a bluegrass player, so maybe that's, maybe that's the big hold up here for me. If I you were know, a bluegrass player, I'd feel differently. I, uh, the friend of mine who sold me on these was like, uh, he was like, I can play stuff with this pick that I can't do with my normal pick. And I was like, oh, that's a, intru- that's a really like bold statement to make. So mm-hmm. I tried it, and it's true, actually. Yeah? In my case, yeah. Some, if, sometimes when I have to play like speedy jazz solos, which I've had to do in the past, yeah. um, sometimes it's like I can't do I can speedy do it on jazz. this, but I can't do it on... Well, I think that's interesting. Maybe I'd feel differently if I played it for longer and I realized if there were any discrepancies between, yeah, just how it felt to play 
with one pick versus the other. Like if I played a bunch of the blue chip pick and I'm like, wow, I am doing stuff I mm -hmm. can't normally do or stuff that I normally find feels quite a bit more difficult, feels way less difficult. Yeah. So um, yeah, you know what? I have an open mind. I'm not going to be like, oh, there's no way I ever would. I would have to, I, there's more convincing Mm -hmm. That would have to happen for me to be like, yes, I'm going to buy a pick that's 50 times more expensive than my right. usual pick. But I'm open to it. You know, uh, Dave Weiner, who we had out for uh, as a Guitario coach uh, a few months ago, his course isn't out yet, but when we had him out and filmed, mm -hmm. uh, he used blue chip picks as well. That's why he, he let me use his, which is like a much thicker one of this, mm -hmm. uh, and the Jazz 3. And I was like, I got to get one of these. They're super cool. Cool. Oh, so he had the, hold on, TD? The, his was not a TD. They oh. call it... Uh, they, I, they think they use the term jazz, th jazz three, or they might not say blue jazz chip? three. Blue chip. They, it's like jazz blue chips three? jazz. Blue chips jazz. jazz. Blue chips jazz. Interesting. Yep. Hmm. Yep. And so I know some people are asking about jazz, like what the heck is a jazz three pick? It's a very pointed pick. It's used a lot for like, you know, yeah, Eric Johnson uses one. That's like immediately who I think of, of with jazz threes, but there's... um loads of players. I know in the metal community, it's pretty common to use those yeah, as Yeah, well. and the typical Jazz 3 is quite small, right? Yeah. Yeah. <laughs> yes. <laughs> I just wanted to yeah, make sure we're small. talking about the same thing. Yeah. Okay, cool. Well, yep. I, I'm going to use one of these picks for our jam at the end, which uh, the members will get to check out, or anyone who quickly gets a free trial. Yeah. You'll be able to join us and check it out. Amazing. But before we go... Um, we're going to do our giveaway. Are we going to do Riff of the Week? Oh my goodness. We have a whole other segment to do. I tested you, Kent. Yes. Don't worry, I remembered. You are so good at this. <laughs> Not my first rodeo. No, so, it we're going to... It's mine. We're, <laughs> okay, I'm going to stop <laughs> We're going to we're going to do a riff gonna, of the week. We're going to do the riff of the week. I'm just going to stop talking, right? Riff of the week is a new new segment we did a long time ago, I think. In the I don't know. We're bringing it back. It's riff of the week. Riff harder. So, the um <laughs> the uh we're going to do uh a really classic tune by uh a classic it's like Less than ten years old. Um, uh, oh my gosh! The why, black keys. The black keys. I was going to say the black eyed peas, baby. I was, it's not true. The black eyed keys. Um, yeah. Uh, anyway, so we're going to do a tune by Black Keys uh, called "Lonely Boy." We're going to show that up. We uh, up on the screen with the tabs. They're going to magically appear. Ooh, Ooh. crazy! Um, and I thought this would be a fun one. If you got your guitar, play along. Um, if you don't know it, it's. Uh, I'm it, going to play along. It's a good one. The. Okay. There we go. Yeah, there nice. we go. I got that on the last one. So it uses a whammy bar, but we're going to talk about what to do when you don't have a whammy bar. They actually use a whammy pedal. Those who know the, the yeah. if you like Tom Morello, you've heard a whammy, pe uh, whammy pedal in action. But yes. um, we're going to talk about what to do when you don't have it and how you can kind of fake the whammy sound. So I'll, you can use the whammy if you got one, like I have, and I did the dive bomb. Um, but we're going to, you do not have a whammy. So we're going to talk about how to learn a riff and make it fit the instrument that you have. So Teach me, Kent. Here we go. It's a lot of zeros and threes, pretty much. It's, That's almost um, like binary, that code, but with zero and two? Why do I, why? Why did I say that? I don't even know enough to make the, that, this is painful for everyone listening. Here we go. Okay, so we got a bunch of zeros, a <laughs> lot of zeros. I don't count them. I just hear it. I guess that's four, right? Yeah, I like singing riffs in my head, so I like listen to la, the song. La, 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 Yeah, la, 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 la. And then you're gonna hit the third fret of the six strings, so we got zero. Yeah. <laughs> we played them at the same time, and it did not sound right. So. Yeah, and there's a little, little, little edge to that three. If you can get it, there's a little. Like a little harmonic kind of? It's, it's more the bend. It's like, oh. it's not a straight three. And even on an acoustic, you can do that. It's just a little. Oh, you mean like the little bluesy little, bend? Little, yeah, there's a little like question mark at the end of that three. Mm. You know, it's not a statement. It's a little hmm. 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 So we got. Okay, after that, it's. Da 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 Yeah, and I think the important part, you, we both did it instinctually, is muting that zero, right? Do, 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 do. There, yeah. right? We both kind of used the uh, meaty part of your 
hand, hand, and then put it on the, uh, just muted those notes. We don't Mitty, want it ringing out. Meaty glove. Yeah, it's the Wagyu part of the hand, actually. Yeah, so. Because if you don't, I feel like it'll just lack that little bit of finesse. Yeah, that rhythmic element. Yeah, it's that rhythmic percussiveness kind of goes away. Yeah. Um, so yeah, it's a it's a good one to work on. And then then we get to the part where he's using a pedal that goes meow, and you hear that meow. Yeah, meow thing. And so <laughs> I was using my whammy bar to do that. If you and if you have a whammy bar, by all means do it. The whammy pedal is emulating that whammy bar kind of motion. And you kind of yeah. just big old dive bomb, get your shoulder into it, and just let her let her oh. go. Yeah, so Shoulder. pretend you're Jeff Beck and let it let it rip. Um, so if you don't have a whammy bar, that's totally fine. You can still do this riff and have yeah. it sound kind of close. Um, what I used to do, because I played this in a band for a while, uh, we would do, I was in the Black Keys briefly. I'm just kidding. Um, <laughs> but the, uh, nice. Oh, you would slide. I would slide. From the 12th fret. Yeah, I mean, 12 is, it's like arbitrary. You just like higher, just slide. Yeah, there you go. I found, it, while it's not identical, you got the point across, you know, of the like. Okay, I see, I see. I'd agree that works, especially if it's more muted. I feel like it just has a little more of a cool like, eh. Why little, am I not using what? my words anymore? <laughs> Sorry, what is that? I don't know, Kent. Question, mm. what would happen if I tried to achieve that sound by actually detuning my guitar? I was just thinking the same yeah? thing. You should try it. I think it would be cool. Let's try it. So the, the holdups with that is you'd have to get it back in tune. And also, you can only go solo. Because uh, I want to get it down to like down there. Yeah. But you just don't have time to get it there. Right. It's a cool trick though. But the reason I wanted to show this riff was because a lot of us, when we learn riffs, we want to be like, and I understand why, verbatim what the riff is telling you to do. So this one would be, hey, use a whammy pedal and go down. And you go, I don't have a whammy pedal. Yeah. Doesn't mean you can't learn the riff. You have to get, you have to figure it out. Let the creative part of your mind take over. Yeah. And don't say, hey, I can't do that, so I'm not going to learn it. No, there's a lot of good stuff in this riff. Figure out a way to make it work. It's. It's a really great way to harness yeah. creativity. You learn new stuff on the guitar. Um, so for me, when I didn't have a whammy pedal or the, the whammy bar, um, and didn't want to do the down tuning thing, I thought about that too when we when I was mm. when I was doing it. But um, yeah, I was just like, oh, I can just slide. It's almost that. Yeah, because it still but... kind of has that swagger. Because I think the most important thing is realizing there's a difference between playing the right notes and capturing the feel of the song. And you can still capture the swagger and the like mojo of that song by doing something different. Um, and I'd argue you could have all the right equipment, like you could have a whammy pedal, and mm -hmm. still be missing that like cool factor that the original has. Uh, for example, the little details like not muting, you know? Yeah. You could be missing that. You could be, you know, not getting the little bend there, you know? It's like all those little details uh, and the feel of it is so much more important than getting it note for note. And I think, mm -hmm. yeah, it leaves a lot of room for creativity, either because you want to do something a little different, because it just feels in your heart like the riff could go somewhere a little different, mm -hmm. or because you don't have the exact equipment that was used in the original. So Yeah, so don't let, mm -hmm. don't let tabs stop you from playing tunes. Something, yeah. just work it out. Um. <laughs> It's time for the giveaway. It is time for the giveaway. I was going to okay. say something else. Oh, I, did we have it on the screen long enough for everybody to... Uh, I mean, you can also come yeah. back to the live there stream later and pause the video. Yeah. But it's also up again, so... Yeah. I always wanted to do, like, yeah. we should have a, like, pause. And you know the song Spanish Flea? Ba -ba -ba -bum, ba -ba -ba -ba. Oh, yeah. And I, like, feel like... Da, 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 da. <laughs> I love go. the pause there. That was really great. All right. So we need to come up with a trivia question for the YouTube audience. The winner is going to receive a free annual membership to Guitario.com. It's going to be amazing. Uh, oh, so this will be yeah. for our YouTube audience. Uh, 
I like some, sorry, somebody posts like Floyd Rose players would cry. <laughs> um, <laughs> that, that's funny. Um, trivia, trivia. We always pick like way too hard of questions. Yeah, they're a little too like, niche. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> yeah. Hmm. Mm. How expensive was Kent's blue chip pick in either Canadian or American dollars? Oh, there we go. Guy 35. B was on it. Oh man, that was Guy so fast. B. I couldn't even think about the answer, and it was it was there. Insane. Amazing. I mean, well done, Guy B. You have won. Uh, Guitario membership. You're gonna hang out on the member side for the next stream. That's so exciting. Uh, super cool. Congrats. So uh, shoot us an email too. Don't do this. To oh, I know. Wait, no. Team uh, at guitario.com. <laughs> T, T E A M at guitario.com. Shoot them an email. We will get you set up with a membership so you can come hang out on. Make sure to email team at guitario.com and you will be set up with everything you need to come to the member side. Yeah. Couldn't have said it better myself. Can we just like cut out the part where you said it first so it'll seem like I actually just knew the seamless, answer? Seamless, seamless. Seamless, I knew the answer. Someone said Ayla had a tough day. <laughs> <laughs> hey, you know what? I had a two day migraine on Monday and Tuesday. I did. And did. I was just at a friend's house yesterday having a nice holiday festive evening and I accidentally <laughs> sat <laughs> on his flowers and destroyed them. So yes, I am having a tough day. Oh no. I didn't even need to share that information but I just needed to illustrate. Now we all know. I destroyed plant his flower. Plant destroyer. Because <laughs> I thought he had been sitting. I didn't even look. I just sat. Oh. It was actually the garbage bin slightly to the left of the flowers that he had been sitting on. But oh. As soon as I felt the crack underneath me, I knew I had messed up. Rip. Rip. Yeah, I'm glad I'm feeling better at least too. Mm hmm. Yeah. All right. <laughs> well. Let's do a giveaway for <laughs> the members. One of you lucky buckos is going <laughs> to a G7 capo. Love and this capo. it's Ken's favorite capo. It is my favorite capo. And we need to come up with a trivia question. And the question will be Hmm. Hmm. Mm -mm -mm -mm. What about. Mm -hmm. Hmm. 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 We always do this to ourselves. I know. I know. We're terrible trivia people. No, you are. I'm kidding. That's not true at all. I'm kidding. I'm kidding. You're you're terrible at this. <laughs> uh, okay. How many twenty dollar picks did I try out today? Yeah, it's a great question. Let's see. Three, almost. No, it wasn't quite three. Oh, we got it. Two. Granny Kiwi. Granny Kiwi. Okay. Coming in clutch. You with can the two. reach out to, I know this one, Ayla at guitario.com. Heck yes, you can. Reach out to me and I will help get you all set up with receiving the capo. You're going to love it, Granny Kiwi. It is a great capo. Uh, one of our other members won one a few weeks ago. Doug won, won one of them. Doug Loved it. Doug Instant. it. <laughs> he really dug it. Doug dug it for sure. Doug dug it for also, sure. I hope he's here today. <laughs> I just want to say I love the way you said Granny Kiwi. You're like Granny Kiwi. <laughs> <laughs> Granny Kiwi. Granny <laughs> Kiwi. <laughs> Am I not saying it semi normally? No, now you are. Now you are. How did I say it before? It was just a little like you just kind of threw away. It's like, have you seen Shaka Khan sing the national anthem? Yes. Yeah, you know how like the end of the phrase is kind of like, oh, say. Oh, kind of okay. just like falls off at the end. So I did like a Shaka Khan impersonation. Which is amazing. I, I want to be very clear. I'm not highlighting this to in any way shine a negative light on what you said. I just appreciate it. I think you it. are actually. No, I'm not, Ken. I'm not, I promise. I actually am not. I'm actually not. <laughs> I'm, I'm not. Anyways, on that note. That's what somebody who would be doing it would say. Yeah, but that's also something that someone who wasn't doing it would say. So Ooh. who knows? Well, I think <laughs> uh, we've done our giveaways. Congrats to Granny Kiwi and Gabby. Congratulations. <laughs> You're going to uh, enjoy your membership and your capo. 
So fantastic. Uh, next week, for those uh, who want to stick around for the Q&A that are in the YouTube area, sign up, guitario.com slash trial. Get on over to that member run, side. Run, run. over. Run right now. Yeah. Go fast. Sign up. You can hang out. We'll be taking some questions at the end. Members, if you want to ask some questions, throw them in the questions tab. Um, we're excited to answer those. Yeah. Uh, and then uh, I was going to say something else. Oh, next week. Next week, Ayla is away on uh, holidays, so yeah. it will be myself and Andrew Clark hosting the guitar riff next week. It'll be fun. We're going to be talking about, are boutique guitars worth it? Is is the Sir worth it? Is the Sir much better than a standard American Stratocaster? I don't know. We're going to find out next week. It's going to be a lot of fun. Andrew's got wealth of knowledge with gear. Yeah. Uh, he's got a lot of fun boutique guitars. We're going to pit those guitars out to guitars of much lesser value and see if they hold up. That sounds interesting. It's going to yeah, be fun. Members, please stick around because the next part of the stream is just for you. But thanks so much to everyone who tuned in. Have a beautiful day. Happy holidays. See ya.